What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games we're checking back in on Clay Entertainment's Grifflands. We haven't touched this one since the first alpha came out back when it initially released to Epic and so this game has been updating like crazy. They're on update number 12 right now and I was kind of streaming you know because I stream at most days of the week over at Twitch TV and like a bunch of my viewers had said like hey have you checked in on Grifflands lately because it's like a completely different game from the last time you played it and that had me kind of interested. You know how it is. Clay is in the industry right now. They are basically kind of the holotype example of everything that an indie company can ultimately be if they really apply themselves to like the art, design, and creation of unique titles. And Clay's always at the forefront of that for indies. It's you can debate whether or not they're indie anymore because they are pretty big at this point. But like, honestly, everything they put out is so good. Uh, so, anyways, we've got Sal Ik Derek, which apparently is hunting Kashio, a bounty hunter with a chip on her shoulder and a glint in her eye. Sal escapes a life of servitude to claim the ultimate bounty and get her revenge. Sounds good. Let's go. Now uh, we've got our negotiation deck. We got our battle deck. Apparently there's mutators and stuff. Oh, wow. Okay, so we can do all kinds of stuff. Apparently you can add mutators to the run now to kind of like change around. So for example, right here, there are no repercussions for murder. The last time we played this game, if you chose to kill somebody, it's a very complex game. And so anyways, it's a game where you're on a map and you negotiate with people and you fight with people, but there's consequences to like everything that you do. So if you rip off like a merchant, that merchant is related to people or does business with people on the map who hear about it through his connections. And if you kill somebody, that person has like a family and they have other people that are working towards the same goals that they are and they become upset with you, which makes your further negotiations either implausible or much more difficult along the way. It's kind of a cool, really complicated game. You've never been one to back down from a challenge. You enter the Grogendal, shrugging off the weird sense of deja vu that hits you. First thing is to find your old friend Fish, who might have a lead on where to find Cassio. Grog and Dog has its charm. The patrons look lively and the floorboards creak like a well-fed toad. There you are. I started to think you might have gotten mugged before you even made it through the door. Your faith moves me, Fish, but I do feel ready for a fight. Like, my blood is kind of pumping, you know? Should serve me up well against Cassio. Fist first breath of fresh air in 10 years, and you get straight to the point. But you won't get nowhere without making some friends. Get your bearings, and maybe tomorrow we can talk about Cassio. Let me give you something, though. People leave the damnedest things behind in the bar. All right, so Fish will give you something every single time you start over. Okay. Uh, we can draft two battle cards right now. We can upgrade a negotiation card, or we can get an amnesiator. Uh, the next card played is played twice, then destroy it. Destroy after one use. Okay. Um, I'll probably... Let's upgrade a negotiation card. Uh, so we have a bunch of different, like, composure things. We've got fast talk. I don't really have anything, like, insanely good here. Yeah, I'll probably upgrade this one right here. So everything here, actually, all these upgrades are pretty good. Uh, these different cards right here are basically different things. So you've got, like... You've got hostile cards, you've got diplomacy cards. This is all for talking. Uh, combat is a completely different thing. But anyways, you're going to do a lot of talking in this game. You're not going to get a whole lot done without frequently talking. I'll probably go with, like, we can upgrade a threaten. That sounds pretty good. We can do a visionary threaten, which allows us to draw a card, or we can attack with this card twice. Eh, don't really like that very much. Don't really like that very much. I think we're better served going with like, I was looking at this one right here, and then we go with Hostile Instincts. That sounds pretty good. Uh, we can get work. I got people in my pocket who owe me a favor. Goni, Oso, and Bina. They're also easy people to find. Tell them I sent you, and you can settle their tabs by giving you work. Get that done, and I'll get you a plate of popped Oshnu eyes on the house. Bless your warty hide, fish. I'll hold you to that. All right, cool. Sounds good. Uh, we'll go find something to mess around with. So here we are on the world map. And we've got a quest available over on this side called Hit the Beach. Wants us to clear out some beasties from a desolate beach so that the Jakes can use it for smuggling. All right. Uh, we'll get a Oshnu glue card. Choose a card in your hand and give it Sticky for the rest of the fight. Okay. Uh, sticky apparently means that, like, I don't discard the card at the end of my turn. It just, like, stays with me. This down here is a secret shopper. Goni has a package ready at the Slurping Snail but can't pick it up. Okay. And then this one over here, we have investigate a wilderness location for signs of illegal activity. You can probably do that. Was there anybody else inside the Grog and Dog? Who's this guy right here? The smuggler has a reputation for negotiating steep fees for his services. Perhaps the origin of the Havarian phase, coughing up the cash. The Shroke looks you up and down on suspicion. Okay. 
So we've got little modifiers up above their heads, too, that, like, tell us how they feel about us. That person's, like, neutral with us, and he's a guard, so he's basically kind of a, uh, he's a bouncer, effectively. This person likes us. Okay, she was friends with our parents. And then this person also owns the Grogan dog. Okay, I like the little symbol. I like I like the symbolism and stuff that they've put into the game that you can kind of like tell just at a glance how everything is. Uh, let's go. We'll do this one right here. We'll hit the beach. Sounds good. All right. So at this location, Bina's here. We've got a proprietor and we've got a guard. Sometimes when you stare into the void, Faporo stares back. Okay, I don't want to eject anybody right now. I don't care about that. Bina comes from a long line of warriors known for getting the job done. They do you. I hear that you got work, and I'm here to help you out with it. Yeah, you look like you can handle it. Uh, there's a beach nearby. It's kind of ugly with a sludge smell that you can't really find anywhere else. Uh, so, Jakes, we use it for stuff that ain't none of your concern, so... It's been overrun with beasts. Is that a euphemism? No, like, I mean actual beasts. We picked up that place because nobody else wanted it, but it turns out it's just right for monsters. Clear them out. We'll consider the job done. All right. We'll go take care of it. Uh, we can get 10 bucks instead if we want, or we can get a card that will help us out with the fight. Uh, I do think that... I don't know how much bleed I have. Honestly, I kind of like that wild lunge card. It's a little gambly, but I kind of like it. Alright. Uh, what does the proprietor have? Alan's prices are fair, even when the skies aren't. Uh, she's got a spark grenade, she's got a sequencer, and she's got a spark shot. Okay. Kind of pricey, and honestly, like, they're single use, so I'm not really super stoked about things I can only use once. Uh, let's open up the map, and we will find out about this dog quest over here. A mysterious figure approaches. Greetings, Grifter. You look like you could use an edge. I got two, friend. I don't understand. Oh. You're referring to the blades, while well, I'm referring to the specially imported battle goods from the Roalock. Are you interested? I can get a serrated dirk? Yeah, I'll take it. Thank you. Please use it responsibly. Alright. Well, we got a serrated dirk now. So hopefully that'll be, like, a cool thing to have. Alright. Well, let's hit the beach. I mean, we bought ourselves a weapon. So the, each, the beach is easy to find, having exactly the unique pungency of Bina's description. And then a couple of broken crates stamped with Deltrean seals. There's not much here, as far as you can tell. Hello, monsters. You want to come out and get stabbed? There's a snuffling from within one of the shattered crates, which almost distracts you from the creatures cresting the bluff above you. You grip your weapon, pointy and outwards. Let's do it. Apparently, it's a wild yodi out here. All right. So, this dude right here is going to attack me. He will panic after receiving five more damage. This guy is going to do something. I actually don't see a damage number anywhere. Let's uh, start this out so we get hammer grip and saber grip. If we put those into our hand. Let's go for a wild lunge. Looks good to me. Five damage is what's up. I'll put some defense on me just in case. And then I'm going to go with a stab right there. And I think that's it. Well, I'm glad that I decided to block. I didn't see any damage being listed for what he was going to deal. Uh, we got a couple of bleeds that were thrown out right there. This guy's going to panic in six more damage, which I think is like a really, really good idea. I'm going to use the serrated dirk on him. So that gave us Roloak Karambit. Apply three bleed, then expend. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Oh, he panicked and ran. Never mind. We're not going to get any mileage out of that bleed. He's going to deal two to five damage over there. I don't want to use that. I want to use my defense then. If he's going to smack me, I kind of want to, like, blunt it a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Oh, we've got elbow strikes over here for three damage. Yeah, why not? We'll hit him with some elmo strikes. Learn this one on the... Uh, we learned this one on the streets, all right? The Sesame Streets. Uh, let's see. We've got bleed. Unplayable at the end of their turn. Take two damage and expend the card. That sucks. I would like... Let's go with saber grip. I like freebies. Freebies are good. He's got a bleed on him right now. I think we can get him to panic, though, pretty soon. And we've got cripple. We've got enrage. Draw two cards. That sounds nice. There we go. That's what I was looking for. And that guy's on out of here now. Uh, so we can pick a card. Let's see. We got backstab. If this card was improvised, it costs zero till the end of the turn. Okay. We've got carve. Spend up to two combo. Apply one wound per combo. All right. And then we've got rebound. 
Gain two counter for each card played this turn. Deal one damage back to any enemy when hit. Okay, I don't really like that that much. Like, backstab seems all right. I'll take backstab. It deals good damage even if you don't have it improvised. You made good work of the monsters. Binding didn't say anything about cleaning up the mess, though. All right, well, there you go. We got our job done, so let's head back and get our paycheck. That's the best part of a job well done. I used to work freelance, dude, and I swear to God, the first time... The first time I did a job for somebody, and then I was like, job's done. And they just, like, handed me a check for, like, the amount that I quoted them, like, on the little, you know, on the little invoice or whatever. It was a magical feeling, dude. Being like, wow, dude, I created money. Like, I did a thing, and they gave me money for it. Like, I didn't have a boss or anything. I just, like, did my own thing and just conjured money out of the ether. It was a crazy feeling. Got kind of addicted to it. Uh, tell Bina that the beach is clear. More fetid than ever, but monster free. Not bad. Whatever keeps the lollygaggers away. We've got important business to conduct there, which I expect you to keep to yourself. Hey, Hunter's Honor. Alright. 55 shills. Very nice. And then we've got Oshnu Glue over here. I don't really want it, but, you know. Uh, does she like me now? Oh, nice. That person's actually, like, down with me now. They might help me if I'm in trouble. Cool. I like that, though. Like, I really love the social systems they've put into this game where, like, you've got, like, an entire relationships tree over here. And you can see, like, who hates you. You can see who dislikes you, who loves you. Like, it's really, really awesome. And then you can also see, like, if you click on them, like, they'll have, if I remember correctly from the last time I played, like, they've got a list of people that they like and hate as well. And based on whether or not you like or hate them, like, different stuff will happen. Now let's see here. We've got a meditation spot, a limited time opportunity to increase our resolve, which I think is our HP when we're doing negotiations. Uh, we've also got a treasure over on a battlefield there. I'm going to go for the meditation spot. That sounds like a permanent increase to my stats, and I'm a, I'm a fan of permanent increases to my stats. Uh, woods fall silent and there's no one around. You can take a moment to gather your thoughts. Meditate on the nature of meditation. Oh, really? It only restores my resolve. If I re increase it, I'm going to lose most of my resolve, and I think we're about to do a social mission, too. Damn. Seemed like a really good plan at the time, but I guess not. Uh, Orig is offering you money to lay a beat down on Zimmon. Just be careful not to take it too far. Okay, we've got competing bids on that side. Let's do the bounty hunt over here. Apparently, there's a bounty on Goni. There's a 25 shield bonus if you bring him in alive. I bet I can do that. Let's go. What Rudano has sacrificed in scruples he's made up for in passive aggression. Didn't think my day would involve a grifter dealing. I hear you're looking for hunters. Always. There's never a shortage of bounties here in Havaria. Rudana praises you, paying careful attention to the knives in your belt. Seems like you might be a good fit for one target in particular. What did they do? Honestly, I don't even know. I just have a list that I gotta clear, so if you bring him in dead or alive, I'll pay more for alive if you can manage it, but, you know, I'm not picky. Alright. Uh, we get a starting bonus here, which is pretty cool. I accept the quest. Uh, we've got deal bonus damage equal to the cost of your hand. That could be really good or really bad, depending. Backstab is nice, though, dude. Like, I kinda like backstab. We got blade flash over here. Oh, wow. That's not bad. Three to four damage, and it gives you two of them, and they're free. I can see that escalating if you build the deck right. So where's this person supposed to be? Uh, that's your job. According to the dossier, they're known associates of Veep and Erbla. I'd start by talking to one of them and see what you can rustle up. Aye, aye, Sarge. Ain't my rank. Your enthusiasm's noted, though. All right. Now let's open up the map, and we got to talk to Veeb or somebody else. Oh, we got an event. Hey, you want to buy a Vrock real cheap, just uh, don't ask where it came from, or if it's healthy, or if it's trained. But it's yours if you got the shills. Uh, so, I've done this quest before. Um, the Vrock is basically, you, it's like a rotten space dog. Uh, and it smells terrible, which means that like when you do social negotiations, you smell like the dog. And so basically, if you take the Vrock, you're really good in combat, but you're really terrible at negotiations. It's up to you if you want to take it. It will make you considerably power more powerful in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but it does make you quite more of a liability in negotiations, so it's really your call. I said don't ask about it. Just take it or leave it. Something tells me the Vrock is more trouble than you bargained for. Why not just hand it over? Alright, so here we are in negotiation. 
I'm gonna start off with a fast talk here. What is that? Intent. They will cause four resolve damage to one of my arguments. Okay, I don't think I have any arguments. Go right there. So let's discuss this, shall we? I'm just gonna open up on her right here. And then I'm gonna go with a deflection on me, just to kind of take a little bit of the edge off on her first turn. I probably could have double blocked and done better, but like, eh, who cares? Uh, there's an argument right there, suspicion. Diplomacy cards will deal minus one damage with a minimum of one damage. So as you can see, our diplomacy cards have been kind of nerfed. The good thing here is, I would like, what does influence do? So all of your diplomacy cards will deal maximum damage. Or we can go with mean. I'm going to go with mean. Uh, that way I can instantly knock out that argument right there. So that argument's been eliminated. We no longer have a debuff to any of our abilities. Uh, I can improvise a card. Why not? Yeah, improvise a card. Uh, incept two vulnerability. So it's added to our opponent's argument. All resolve loss is increased by one. Reduced by one at the start of your turn. Oh, so it'll make me hit him harder? Okay. All right, draw two cards and expand. Incept one flustered. I'll probably go with that one right there. That sounds all right. And then we'll throw out a threat and just kind of see what happens. Oh, I was about to get hit for four, huh? Well, I didn't get any defense cards anyway, so who cares? Like, I do feel like we can probably play catch up right here. So they're deploying arguments, deploying arguments. All right, good to know. Uh, four damage going out too, so we should probably put up some kind of deflection, just to make sure we don't get smacked that hard. What do I want to throw out here? I'm gonna throw that out. I want mean again, dude. Mean is what's up. Like I'm trying to take a trying to take an early lead right now in this resolve damage. We are going to have like a number of things. So bone tired, when destroyed, this guy loses six resolve. So I would actually kind of suggest, I'm gonna throw that up right there just to help out a little bit. Nice, okay, so that worked out great. I'm very, very happy with that result. Uh, we will continue attacking. What is that shield right there? What does that do? We'll apply composure to a random argument, okay. And then they're going to cause four damage. Just keep attacking. We only did one right there, but that's life. Okay, so three armor up right there. Uh, if we get good cards, we can finish this on this turn. Honestly, I just keep turning that in for mean because mean deals so much damage. That it's just a really great card to have. I'm going to go for a threaten. We got a four out of it, which means we win. There we go. Uh, there's some negotiation cards that we can take right now. We've got pure style, draw two cards, and then upgrade them for this negotiation. That's pretty hot. That's a that's a pretty spicy card right there. The damage in the next card played this turn is doubled. That's pretty spicy, too. Apply two composure to all of your arguments. Okay. So that basically allows me to get... Is that for the rest of the battle? Huh. I'm going with pure style. That's the kind of card that I like. It's got to be giving you a lot of hassle. Is it really worth your time? No, he's a menace. Honestly, he'd be doing me a favor. He kicks the covered cage to jostle the Vrock, then wrestles it into a lead. When she returns, both Echel and the Vrock are looking sour. Here you go. One mongrel. The Vrock looks at you quizzically, then pees. Echel shuffles uncomfortably as the puddle spreads towards her boots. Enjoy, I guess. You wonder if this was a good idea. So we've got a dog now named Cadaver. You know what, there's no such thing as a bad dog. There's only bad owners, all right? And she had a bad owner. We're gonna train this dog and it's gonna be okay. Uh, who do I need to talk to, Veep? By the calluses on his hand and the heavy sigh on his lips, it's clear Veep has been worked to the bone. Another day in the feud, huh? Hey, you wouldn't happen to know where I could find Goni, would you? Goni? Nah, I don't even know him. If I did, he would have told me to keep my mouth shut, and if he didn't, I would know enough not to talk. You sure? You seem kind of scared of him, considering, you know, he's someone you've never met and all. Um. So Eccles the one that sold me the cadaver, so if I beat this guy up, it's going to mess with my reputation with her, or I can convince him. Look, I'm a hunter, all right? You tell me where Goni is, I'm going to take him in, and then you got nothing to be scared of. Yeah, and what if you fail, right? Goni's going to be extra ornery. And uh, so I think. I don't know him personally. What is that thing? Oh, man, this guy came out the gate hard on me. Okay. Okay. 
So I need that to go away. I don't have any defensive cards. So, I think we're going to have to go all out on badassery this turn. Hopefully we get a double four. No, we got a four and a one. Feels bad. Those cards that have that wide bracket for the damage they can do are always a problem. What's he got there? Suspicion. Diplomacy cards will deal less damage. Okay. Let's see if I can get rid of that real fast. I was say, I really need that to go away and not last till next turn. If that stays on the board, I'm going to have big issues. I would have liked to have gotten some damage off that turn, but it's just kind of the way that it goes. So as you saw, the Vrock makes it so we take five damage a turn until we get rid of it in negotiation. Makes life harder. Uh, hostile Instincts? Yeah, I can do that. Go with Mean down here. So there's another four damage. And I can gain three Composure right there, so that's nice. Perfect. I gave myself the shield that I needed in order to avoid that damage. Alright. I got it again, dude. This card is the best card ever for giving me a free four damage. Come on, three. Oh, I got a one, dude. I went all in. I got... I could have blocked all this damage, but I got greedy. Oh, I could have hit his argument, too. I forgot. He's got... Uh, bone tired. I could have hit that, and that would have finished him off. I wasn't even paying attention. Alright, so we beat him right there. One thing you will note, though, is our HP and our resolve do not come back in between fights. So be, like, careful. That Be, be really, really careful about how many fights you take without resting in between. Eventually, you're going to want to go back to an inn and, like, recover. Uh, let's see here. We've got second win. Gain one action for every three cards in your discard. Okay. That's decent. Uh, evil eyes all right, and then we've got a press. Hostility cards will deal an extra damage, reduced by one at the beginning of your turn. Okay. I mean, that's a flat buffer if we get a turn with a lot of red cards, so... Look, you want to spend your whole life living in fear, or do you want to seize the day and make something happen? Tell me where to go, and I'll make your problem go away. You could really do that? I guess you're a hunter, and I guess that's what people pay you for, so I guess I'll show you, because you got to do the job right. He marks your map in a hurry, then turns away as if you never spoke. Uh, he's still neutral. That person's still neutral. What's she got going on? Hey, Sal. Apparently, she doesn't have anything she wants to talk about right now. The name Cadwa comes from an old fork story about outsmarting a cruel foreman, but as a bureaucrat, this Cadwa definitely has the upper hand. Keep on the good side of the Admiralty, and your livelihood will benefit all the more for it. Okay. All right, good to know. Let's go back out to the world map and see if we can find this Goni guy. Alright, where's Goni at? I was going to say, is Goni this guy? Because this guy looks pretty beefy. Oh, that's Goni right there. So he's a patron, and we are bounty hunting him. If you had to get robbed, it wouldn't be too bad to get robbed by a face like Goni's. Goni's nods an acknowledgement of your presence. It's a start. Um, so I'll lose so I can share a drink with him, but I'll get slurred speech. And I'll get tipsy. But I'll get 10 resolve back. You know, when a bounty hunter catches their quarry, they say something like, you gonna come quiet or are we gonna do this the hard way? Uh, yeah. Oh. So it seems you can't decide whether or not you're a hunter or a comedian, but I know what you really are. Dead. Oh, he's got like a homeboy over here. Okay. Uh, I got a lot of damage coming towards me, so I'm gonna do that real fast. And then we're going to throw out some damage where we can. There we go. Perfect. I don't got anything else to play, so... You stabbed my dog? It's kind of a dick move, man. I got the serrated Dirk here. I don't think I have any defensive cards. Gain two combo, expend, apply two wound, draw a card, discard a card. All right. Man, that worked out exactly. I was hoping I'd get something free out of it, okay? Oof, all those bleeds, though. All those bleeds, though. I got six damage coming at me. All right, put up a shield a little bit. We got Sal's daggers right there. I'm going to play... Saber grip. Let's keep the bleed stacked up on this dude. Like, I want this guy to really take some damage here. 
He's also taking some extra damage from like uh, some of the random hits that we're dealing out, so I think it'll be okay. Uh, next turn's gonna be rough though. I got a lot of bleeds going out. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, let me improvise a card real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit of defense. Stab him up a little bit. Run Sal's daggers. I don't have any combo, but that gave me enough damage to kill that guy off, which is really all that I wanted. I mean, I guess I could have tried to bring him in alive, but I wasn't super confident of my abilities. What did that do? Power. Attack damage is increased by three. Ew, gross, dude. Okay, I'm going to go full defense on this turn then. Because he's definitely putting out some heat right now. I've got a little bit of combo. Yeah, I'm going to front load my... We don't have a lot in our draw pile right now. And so there's a good chance we'll get most of those on our next turn. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was leaning into. This ain't worth dying for. Except his surrender. There's no need to kill people in this game if you don't have to. Hiku hates you and will likely you have incurred her fury and will face the consequences. You killed their friend Ash. Oh, well, he didn't surrender. You know what I mean? All right. That's fine. I mean, like, so as I was saying, you don't want to kill people haphazardly in this game because there will be consequences for it. Like that right there. We killed that guy that was just a side character to the dude we were trying to capture. And now his girlfriend or his friend or whoever she is hates us. Uh, it is what it is. So draw two cards, gain combo equal to their combined cost. Or we can do tackle. That gives us defense. On, ooh, I like anything that gives me defense and damage. Uh, we got a heavy cleaver right there. We got 21 bucks, and we got some restall back or some resolve back for winning. I'll take my chances with the admiralty. That's more like it. Just wish you could have realized this before we went through the whole rigmarole. You bind Goni's wrist, and he falls in line behind you. All right, so Goni's not going to be like a, a fan of us after all this. You come across the remains of an unfortunate traveler. Whoever took him or attacked him took the flesh but left the wealth. Something interesting pokes out from under the corpse. All right. You gather up what you find. You'll have to study a bit more closely when it's safe. We got $81? Nice, man. Money's kind of hard to come by in this game from what I remember, and so 81 is pretty sweet. That might, like, give us a little bit of extra scratch to buy something good with. There's Goni. You brought him in alive. Nice job, Grifter. You surprised me. Let's go, Goni. We got a lot to talk about. It's an outrage. I got set up. I'm telling you. Save it for the magistrate. So apparently Goni now hates me. That's 55 bucks. And we can get a negotiation card. Bounty Hunter. Okay. It gives us one wanted, whatever that does. I guess we'll play around with it once we get a little bit further. Uh, so if I give 150 shills to him, he will give me once a day a member of the Admiralty will help you in battle or in a negotiation. Oh, really? So for 100 bucks, I can get, like, backup from, like, the actual colonial authority. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Rudana loves you. You've captured his loyalty. Don't waste it. Nice. So once a day, a member of the Admiralty will help us. Sweet. So, I mean, if we... I mean... So either way, it works out really, really well. It either lowers the impact of a random event we get on the road, or it increases our impact when going into something important. So either way, I think it's going to save us resources and make our lives a little bit easier. Ulu doesn't come here very often for help, so it says volumes of how much crime has come to a head in Murder Bay. Never let, it's called Murder Bay, man. Like, why would you live in a place called Murder Bay? Like, I don't think real estate prices are going to be real, real high in a place called Murder Bay. Nevertheless, she's tenacious enough to see the Admiralty to victory and cunning enough to navigate the quagmire of bureaucracy and corruption in the ranks while still coming out on top. And ask what you're up to lurking through the feud at night, but you could probably ask me the same. Yep, you're right about that. Hey, there's more stuff to do. Uh, but we're... Oh, our friend Bina has a gift for us. Let's go get it. Yeah. Bina's happy to see you. Hey, Sal, I found something the other day. It made me think of you. You don't have to take it if it'll bog you down, but it's yours. Ooh, a spark shot. Nice. Thanks, Bina. Sweet. 
All right, well, my name is Splattercat. This is Grifflins, dude. I'm so excited about this game. It is so much fun. Uh, let me know if you want to see more. Maybe I'll stream it or something. Let me know what you think down below. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for being here. Take care, everybody, and that's all I got for you.